let's talk about operational amplifiers. An operational amplifier, or op-amp, is a high-gain electronic voltage amplifier. This means we usually put in a small voltage wave, and we want to get out an amplified wave. An op-amp has one output and typically two inputs, a non-inverting input and an inverting input. There are also two power supply terminals that are essential for amplification. We can't just amplify a wave without some sort of power supply. There are many ways to power an op-amp. We can use a dual power supply which allows us to produce output voltages that can swing above and below zero volts. We can also use a single power supply and ground our negative power supply terminal. It all depends on your application. In order to understand how an op-amp takes a voltage signal and amplifies it, we must understand its differential input, which is the difference between the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage at the inverting terminal. Depending on what op-amp you use, the open loop gain can be in the order of 100,000 to a million or even higher. So our V out is going to be equal to our open loop gain times the difference in voltage at the inputs. On this particular op-amp, the open loop gain is 1 million, so even a tiny difference in one direction will amplify our voltage signal as high as it can go. If the difference between the non-inverting and inverting terminal is too large in relation to the op-amp's open loop gain, the op-amp will drive its output to one of the supply rails. This is known as clipping or saturation when it rails to one of the supply voltage values. The voltage saturates in this circuit because of the high gain. Gain is the ratio between the voltage output and the voltage input. This open loop configuration is a great comparator, however if we want to have more controlled amplification, or gain, that doesn't hit a rail each time, we need to add more components. This generally involves some sort of feedback loop. There are too many op-amp configurations to go over a comprehensive view of all they can do, but let's take a look at three of the most common configurations to get you started. We first have a voltage follower. A voltage follower, or buffer, is a simple configuration that provides a gain of 1. We use this to connect a high impedance source to a low impedance load without affecting the signal. This works because the output is connected directly to the inverting input. This feedback loop forces the op-amp to adjust its output so that the voltages at the two inputs are virtually equal. This is the core principle of negative feedback, where we have a wire from the output to our inverting terminal. The next configuration also uses a negative feedback loop, but this time we add a few resistors to create a non-inverting amplifier. We can use a gain equation to adjust our amplification, and as long as our amplified wave doesn't reach the positive or negative rail, we will have a clean amplified signal. You can see that our signal in green has an amplitude 10 times greater than our original signal in blue. Our third configuration looks quite similar to our non-inverting amplifier except our voltage signal is now coming from our inverting terminal. Using a node voltage derivation, our gain equation is slightly different and has a negative sign. This changes the polarity of our output which can affect things depending on your application for this amplifier. You can see that once again this takes our 100 millivolt signal and gives us a 1 volt peak to peak signal as our output. For this intro to op amps video, I hope you now understand that an op amp amplifies a voltage signal. We also learned that the most amplification you can get from an input signal is dependent on your power supply. We took a glance at op amps in an open loop configuration with no feedback, as well as three different negative feedback configurations used all the time in electronics. Op amps are unbelievably versatile and essential for any electrical engineer. If you want me to go into more depth on other op amp configurations, let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching today's video.